right, pulling down my mic here right about now. Now I've got we live on uh, Facebook. I'm sorry for any delays that you may have had it previously, so I've done that. So, uh, please, Mr. Quaker, introduce yourself, please. Right, good afternoon, listeners of Omega Reggae. My name is Kwaku. I do live in Brent. I am the founder of BritishBlackMusic.com Black Music Congress. It focuses on black music with an emphasis on Britain. So we love the reggae coming from Jamaica, we love the R&B coming from America, but we have to focus on Britain. So that's what we do. Also, we enter the music industry because yes, a lot of our youngsters, particularly, can make the music, but they have to understand some industry. So how do you get to register your songs? How do you make money, monetize your 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 your, your rights? We teach those, and we also sort of are a pathway into courses, into the industry structure, so we understand it's a business. So that's where we're at. And I'm also what I call a history consultant in the sense that I do deliver history programs. Again, my focus is very much, although I'm a Pan-Africanist and I'm into global African history, I tend to concentrate on what I call British African history only because, again, we know about Rosa Parks, but did we know that there was a Bristol Bass Boycott, for example. Uh, we've got a lot of history. Civil rights is not just what happened in America or South Africa, so I tend to do a lot of African British art uh, history that I do global history when needed. And I do a lot of things in the community, particularly in Brent, we've got something called stand up against no sorry, taking a stand against littering and fly posting, or rather the other way around, taking a stand against fly posting and littering. So we do a lot of uh, community act activities. So that's me. And I can waffle on to you ready to <laughs> All oh, right, because I know you're looking at the technical thing. All right, um, yeah, I've been over to a couple of places then. All right, introduce yourself one more time, please. Right, so again, it is Kwaku K W A K. Kwaku. Yes, Kwaku K. Remember, I had a problem pronouncing your name this morning. Yeah. I said, why don't you just have a name like Paul <laughs> yeah, and Joe and so forth? My bad, anyway, that was rude. I, I, I know, so maybe since I'm um, quite happy to talk around music and all. Uh, identity and history i'll just jump on, on, the, on, on okay the, the name thing i mean uh when somebody hears the name kwaku immediately it locks down that i'm african and it's important that identity because when you say john smith you could be european i mean i've spoken to africans on the phone and i assume they're european because their accent was quite british but if they're called uh Kwaku or in Lele or something like that, then you know the African. I think I do hear what you said earlier on in the morning, but look, sometimes we've got <laughs> some very difficult Russian names and we learn to pronounce them. And I think um, that was the yeah, thing, that's no, all no, it was. No, no, I, I do realize that obviously, okay, some, realize that some, no, some of them don't come easy. For example, we've been so used to calling what's his name, um. The, the, the Zimbabwean, uh, former Zimbabwean president Robert Mugabe, so don't think about it. But now we've got some, a new person, we've got to learn how to pronounce his, his last name. And it's in, I think it's Iman Gwagwe. So, I mean, after a while it comes routine, so we've got to get used to the idea that Africans do have a name. Remember, when we used to watch Roots, one of the uh, what pivotal points in that uh, series was when he was being flogged. The, the master or the slave wanted to give him, or the overseer, wasn't it? The slave or the overseer wanted to give the name Toby. And for a long time he said, No, Kunte Kinte, Kunte Kinte. He was prepared to be whipped to stand for his name. Okay. As someone said uh, recently, for strategic reasons, he ended up taking Toby. But he, he, he made the stand for it. And I think. Uh, our names are quite important. I have to say, I have lived in Britain for over 40 years, and I know the times when uh, young people of continental African heritage would pretend to be Caribbean and most uh, often not Barbadian or whatever, it would be Jamaican because Jamaicans are, are the, the, minor, the majority and they, 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 they have the flow. But now, 
uh, continental Africans are coming through, whether in films, in music, I mean, let's face it, grand, continental Africans are running. So there's this confidence. You look at uh, in, in, in the media, people of African names are coming through, and I think that gives people confidence to use the African names. I do see a few young people of continental African heritage, and they have to be called Elizabeth, and only the parents at home know their so-called African names. But I hope in time, Look, we'll, we'll get over it because our names are part of our Africanness. And having said that, of course, I do realize that some of our brothers and sisters are diasporan Africans. In fact, some people don't like that distinction continental or diasporan. If you're African, you're African. But I will sort of uh, use that semantics for now so we can see the differences. Some people of uh, Caribbean heritage are not happy enough having their John Smith, they're going back and either. For example, you know, uh, what's his name? Juan Mikuyama. He, he was called, uh, his name now escapes me. Fine enough, I always use it, but it escapes me. He had European names, but I told his mom when he was 13 years. I think after watching Roots, that uh, sometime he changed his name. And he, uh, he went to Ghana and uh, came back as Juan Mikuyama. Uh, Ian Roberts, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, there's some Roberts in there. Anyway, so he changed his name. Linton Kwesi went halfway, uh, Linton, then he added the Kwesi Johnson. So I think uh, one of the things actually I do is that we've got something called ironing, yeah, um, where you want to engage with your Africanness by adopting an African name as part of your identity. So, yeah, I thought I'd start a program of talking about names because of what you said earlier, of course. It is quite important as well. Okay, it. now, I've been to a couple of your events. Uh, I think the last one I went to was over by uh, the Civic Center, right? Okay. And I think you was doing something. There was two, I think. Don Buck was there at one of them. Oh, and okay. then the next, I think it was, um, you was yeah, doing you accolades to, to so Carol Thompson. Was it Carol Thompson? Carol Thompson, Jenna K and Paul Dawkins, yes. Right. So, if I can rerun, or rewind, rather, we... Wearing my British Black Music hat, we've been doing British Black Music Month for the last uh, 11 or so years. It started in 2006. So it started as June's British Black Music Month, but practically goes across to July. So every June, July, we put on a lot of events highlighting British Black Music Month. Some years ago, we gave some awards and then it, it was dormant. But this year, we decided to uh, give some awards uh, to guys who've been in the reggae sector for quite a while and interesting enough all three have a connection to Brent indeed I did a project and they, they may be in the libraries called Brent Black Music History Project which was a DVD and a book I think we did it about 2006 so Carl Thompson was highlighted so was Paul Dawkins they started from here then it, uh, sorry, Carl, Carl Thompson didn't start from here but she ended up in here she used to live in Prickwood so we honor them with um, some awards for having been in the reggae industry for over four, 40 years. And then later in the year, I think it must have been July, or the times just fly. Nevertheless, we did something called Look How Far We've Come, that we showed the DVD. The DVD is called Look How Far We've Come. That was highlighting African British, by the way. I don't say black, I, I call people of African heritage African, whether they're from the diaspora, born here or from the Caribbean. So uh, that DVD highlighted a whole range of uh, Africans, men and women, and uh, they were all asked, answering one question. How far has Britain come in engaging with racism and racial equality issues? So the whole DVD, in fact, I don't think we showed a full DVD. Uh, with people just answering that one question. So, uh, yeah, and I think you came, you came to talk to one. After that, there was some discussion about race, uh, race equality and those type of issues. And the, this coming year, 2018, we'll be doing a lot of it. We call it community talk. Look how far I've come community talk because next year will be the 50th anniversary of the 1968 Race Relations Act. The first one was 65 and then it, uh, it was updated in 68 so that allows us to go into communities show a bit of the dvd and then engage with issues around racism and other societal issues and also some local issues as well 
Yeah, so that's me and those two. Okay, because I, I know there's a couple of meetings as well, and some of them had to leave kind of early. Sure. And um, Carol Thompson, didn't she have a husband or somebody with her that was an entertainer? Was it? No, no, it was Janet K. In fact, Carol Thompson was out of the country, so Janet K. Got her a award on her behalf. But no, Janet, uh, Janet K.'s uh, husband was with her, who happens to be another reggae artist in his own right. Name? Name. Um, <laughs> oh, don't follow me and do like Romero. 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 That's what it is. Romero oh, Evans. well, I've got it in the house Victor, also looking at me Victor all Victor Romero all Evans. <laughs> you won't forgive me, Victor Romero Evans. Yeah, I mean, obviously, people re remember Carol K. Uh, sorry, Jenny K. But Victor's been a a around for a while. I think the video was more highlighting about the big contribution from Brent. And there was a whole bunch of artists that he was calling out, and it was like a long time. I was there watching the video and so forth, right? And you just wanted to let the world know that there's a great talent that did come out of Northwest London. Absolutely. That was the whole essence of it. Absolutely. What happened was that I've lived, as I said, I've lived there for many years, and we'll be going around with my wife now. So this building is. Oh, this before, I'm sorry. Would you like to say hi to your wife? <laughs> indeed, indeed. Please. I hope. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I will not say, or if you're watching or listening, rather, you are. I suppose you can also watch, but I didn't fix up the Facebook, so I fixed up the radio. Well, say so. good afternoon to her. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon, I'll say. Uh, so, yeah, uh, she's a great inspiration. We both are married couple and also working partners. So, we'll be going around Brent now. So, this building used to be this. For example, the one I most remember was there used to be a building that. Uh, a company called Zumba used to be in, and most people now have heard of Zumba. But one time, Zumba was the biggest independent music company in the world. And that's the world's thing. Yeah. It was? Yes, that building is now owned by a church. Um, I, I forgot what it's called. At one time, the library went in when they were renovating the, uh, the Wilson Green Library. They, they, went, they moved into that building. So, yeah, and across the, across the road, they also had this recording studio. So I'll say this sh this so, shop used to be here. Can you mind? You familiar with half of this? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh well, you know what? <laughs> so, so you can tell me, man. Come here, come here, man. It's a conversation. So that's a king line. You look at the jacket. I got king line bent out of shape and said, "That's his time from twelve till ch twelve till chips." And he looked at me all ugly and bent out of shape. So you know what? Because nah, a lot of the information, I wasn't in the UK, so it's hard for me to oh, turn. Okay. I can only I can only talk about what like. Yeah, what we're gonna do for Marcus Garvey? Can yeah. we put up a plaque for Marcus Garvey yeah. in Brent because he died in, because uh, he was part of Brent. He died in Kensal Rise. You understand? Or passed away, I should say, not died, passed away because yeah. he still lives with us still. Okay. And he was in Kensal Rise, and he was buried in Kensal Rise next to the body to Jamaica. So that's part of Brent. Okay. So that's I, 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 actually, I've got to pick you up on that. No, he didn't live here. Uh, he was interred in uh, the cemetery in Kensal Green. But do you know something? Technically. It's just the that street, the Harris Road, it crosses over from Brent to another borough. So technically it's not in Brent. Oh, well, no. it is Brent. We made it Brent, <laughs> yes. right? So but what we'll happened but what happened again, wearing my other hat as an African uh, history consultant, there used to be a bust in the old Wilson Green Library. And then when it was demolished to be uh, redeveloped, the, the museum was smaller. So the Marcus Garvey bus just disappeared. And as usual, we talk and not do anything about it. So there's a lot of emails going around. Oh, the Marcus Garvey bus is no more. We can't find it. Nobody was doing anything. So myself and a few people got together and we set up something called the Marcus Garvey Bus Collective. Oh, yeah? And we went to the library and we said, we need to have this thing back. We had a, a, a few discussions. The initial the idea was that we don't have any space. So maybe we might bring us a, so a temporary display. And I said, no, we want it as a permanent display. I'm glad to say that uh, this was one occasion in which uh, we didn't have to knock heads for too long. The, the, the library services agreed. And now Marcus Garvey is in the museum as a permanent display. So if you go to the first floor, I do believe in the museum, you see it in the glass case. And then what we do is that we're building programs around it. Marcus Garvey was born August 17th. So every 17th of August, we have what's called the Mar An Marcus Garvey Annual Pan African Presentation. So last year, I did it, you know, the last two years, it was focused very much on Marcus Garvey. 
But next, this year, or rather next year, 2018, need not be about Marcus Garvey. It's about Pan-Africanism, which he was part of. But we have his name as the overarching uh, brand for talking about Pan-Africanism in, 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 in Brent. Yes. Well, no, I hear what you're saying. And for, as far as, uh, as an African-Caribbean, Marcus Garvey in the diaspora, he was very instrumental. And I, I respect what you said. But what I'd like to ask you is, you know, is there any way, because you know Dawn Butler, is there any way that we could get a bus of, not even so much a plaque, but something, because in the United States, in uh, Brooklyn, you got a Marcus Garvey Drive. And the and, park, there's and a the park. park as well. Is there any way that uh, we can come together? There's somebody in Brixton, I believe his name is uh, Light, right? Uh, I met him down by the Libyan, um, Libyan Embassy uh, Providence yes. and so forth. So I was I'm talking to him about it, and he was saying, yeah, well, how come we don't have a bus or a plaque or a street or something behind somebody like Marcus Garvey? Is there any way in the near future that you could talk to Don Butler, some of the people that you know, that we could get something put up in commemoration of Marcus Garvey? Right, but first of all, we've got a bust. We're just talking about yeah. the bust. That's in, in, in the uh, Brent Museum. Brent Museum? Yes. No, I'm not here, but that's not for the Abbey Black... You say Marcus Garvey Drive. You don't have to have Marcus Garvey Drive in a museum or a, a roadside in your museum. Everybody can walk past. You got a thing now. I'm just saying something that's more visual that the youngsters then can walk past. Because the youngsters then they go into a museum and they see and say, Oh Marcus Garvey and they just continue walking. But maybe if they see like a road or something like a Jubilee uh, what's it uh, what's that place there? Jubilee Clock. Jubilee Clock. Mm -hmm. Something they got a big statue there. As a matter of fact, they put up something in the Windrush, right, in Brixton. For ex, it was ex -soldiers. soldiers that were participating yeah. in World War One yeah. and World War Two, right? And I'm saying that's great, but is there any way that we can come together? At least we must have a, a bus or a something big for Marcus Garvey. Okay, okay. The, there's no. You can take this one here. Come on, so jump in. Take. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason why that can happen, but I'm glad you use the word. We've got to come together because it's about what you call politicking. Things do not happen in isolation. If I'd gone to the library just myself, probably what we achieved would not be achieved. But because I went as a collective and there were other people behind me, that's how we succeeded in getting the Marcus Garvey bust in the museum as a permanent display. So if you want something bigger than that, it's possible, but it's about politics. It's about lobbying. Because there's a whole lot of priorities for every council or um, in any area. So it's about you make an argument for it. So you have to have, uh, what should I say, uh, a few people come together and say, this is what we want to do. Initially, you probably don't have to look at Don Buckler. If you're looking at, at Brent, it's the council that matters. As much as she's, she, she, she's an MP, MPs have got different responsibilities. The council has got different responsibilities. For example, let me give you an, uh, an idea. Uh, another thing I do is the International Reggae Day. So I coordinate the International Reggae Day in London, now even the UK. And what they do in Jamaica is that they're very much interested in the environment. So they've got some called tree planting for reggae tree planting. Mm. So we've gone to the council to make sure that we can get a space and for a tree to be planted during International Reggae Day, which by the way is 1st July. So next year. So a few weeks ago, I went to the council worker we identify a spot in Houston. So come 1st July, there will be a tree there that is officially uh, unveiled as, I think it will be great if we call it a reggae tree, for example, 1st July. But that's through using the politics, getting in touch with the council and making an argument. So, uh, uh, Uncle, I, I, I hear you, but we've got to have a critical mass asking for something, not just you and me. Just two people. You see what I'm saying? Well, you so I, want to, I want to ask a question just quickly in relation to the Marcus Garvey. Um, I don't know if you remember, Quarko, they used to have a day called, um, in, was it Liberation Day, Emancipation Day? First of August? First of August, that. yes. Yeah, that. And when Margaret Thatcher was in power, she took that away from our people? I'm not quite sure. I could tell you categorically because I used to be with a, a, an organization that was campaigning to get that put back on the record so that we could use that as a day for ourselves. What I'm suggesting is that that 1st of August we claim that as Marcus Garvey Day. Right. Uh, 1st of August uh, has been marked between the Caribbean for over 150 years now. 
and uh, it's only recently in London that we started having the 1st of August African Emancipation Day, Reparations Day, and then we march from uh, Brixton to uh, Downing Street and, and then back again. Mm -hmm. So this is the next is going to be the fifth, the fifth one. So at this moment in time, I think those behind it, the reparation movement, are uh, marking it as the Emancipation Day or uh, Reparations Day. So it need yeah. no, you, we need not have another name on top of it. It's hard enough trying to establish it. It's Right. Next year is going to be right. the fifth one, mm -hmm. and it still hasn't got the traction that it needs. Mm -hmm. I go and I've written a few things online about it, and I think it would be great if the numbers increase. So, change the name is not necessarily change. I think if one stands for my because and I'm a uh, Pan Africanist, I don't say a Gavia because I, I tend to find that people who call themselves Gavia sometimes are not open. They think like, ah, oh, it's our thing. Exactly. There's a bit of fiefdom around it. So, I'll say I'm a Pan Africanist or a global Africanist. But I very much respect that uh, guys, they have done so many programs on him in the UK and Ga in, in, in Ghana. But I suggest that we have a space, maybe like the, oh, the 17th of August is it's marked in, 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 in different places. Sure. We are doing it, the March Center, the uh, Pan African Congress and the Pan African groups always do something on the 17th of, uh, of August. Of, of August. Mm -hmm. So probably that should be something that we can mm -hmm. look at. If you wanted another date, and I think some people have a problem with death. Thank you, thank you, Morks, when he died. If you want to mark some another day, uh, but actually, that is something that probably we ought to do. In 1920, when they had the first uh, congress for uh, the Afghans, right, in in New York, oh, yeah. um, there was a, a declaration, and they had so many, what should I say, Bill of items. Rights. It was Bill of yeah. Rights. Yeah. One of it was that. 31st August should be a holiday for when well, those days they used to say Negro rather right, than African people. It should be, a, we should take it as a holiday. Yes, and then, yes. Since it's been put down on the Bill of Rights, we must now claim that because right. that man they went through the process, they convened it, they've done the proper Congress, and you know, all that work can't go in vain. So, like you say, we really should claim it. Right, and another of our, uh, under that declaration was that. They said that schools should teach the Negro history to the young people. So, in 2014, which was the 100th anniversary of the founding of the UNIA, and often when we say UNIA, we isolate another part of the name, which is the ACL, African Communities League. So, when it started, there were two names. It wasn't just UNI, Universal Af Negro Improvement yeah, Association, okay. African. Uh, <laughs> now, now it's the league, right? So um, then he was talking about let's look at history and that our young people should be taught Negro, Negro history. So in 2014, when we marked the 100th anniversary of the founding of the UNI ACL, at the Ghana High Commission, actually it's the Ghana Consulate in Highgate, we have the program on the UNI, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the motions that was passed was that 31st August is now African History Reflection Day. And we're marking the same. So I think we're into the four, no, next year is kind of like the fifth one. So 31st August is a natural uh, day that we can have. Mm -hmm. And what I said was that a uh, holiday need not be that, oh, I'm not going to work. A holiday. The essence of the holidays that you're doing something different from the, the usual, usual routine. Yes, of course. So if you can even take one hour out of your day to say, hey, let's sit down and reflect on African history, that will achieve the aims of African History Reflection Day, which so, is the 31st August. Right, so this was an incentive by the Ghana High Commission? No, we are aware a number of hats, so one right. of it is the African or Black question. Then we've got African history revista. So no, we so we went in there, but it was basically the the African or Black question. So we put forward that motion mm -hmm. because we sort of co-organized that event, mm -hmm. and that was one of the things that came through on, at that meeting. So have you replicated it? I mean, in terms of like maybe other institutions yeah. at all. Well, and I'm mm -hmm. not sure if we've got any institutions, but. You know, just taking it on a broader level to the organisation. You, 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 you ask a good question. 
unfortunately we're a small organization we have a good turnout and a mixture of, of an Africanists and people that are in interested mm -hmm. but ideas take a while you know now we're marking Black History Month and Black History Month started as uh, Negro History Month 1926 um, Kata G. Woodson it was one person who had a vision it wasn't picked up immediately mm -hmm. it took a while to be what it is today the same actually with Black History Month. Today we talk about Black History Month in Britain, which is in the 30th uh, year now. In fact, when it started, the remit was just for London because it came out of the old GLC. And that, the, uh, wasn't that spearheaded in 1977 by Garvey? There was, I have the actual no, no, pamphlet. 1987. Yes, I have the, the brochure with Garvey on the front. Yes, page. because two things were happening. It was the hundredth anniversary of our uh, so it was centenary of the Marcus right, Garvey. So the right. Marcus Garvey centenary program that was going mm -hmm. and coincidentally uh the GLC that uh, had been disbanded in eighty six. So mm -hmm. uh the the success organization was called the L S P U and they took over London Strategic Policy Unit. Unit. So they put forward the notion of Black History Month UK, but also they supported the uh, guy viewers who were doing the Marcus Garvey centenary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so the brochures, some of them have, have, have both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, as I said, initially it was a London thing because the London Strategic Unit, as the name says, or the GLC, which was Greater London, the, the arrangement was just for London. But mm -hmm. now it's kind of a UK wide thing. So the, back to the question you asked, I would love. 31st August to be established as African History or Reflection Day not necessarily the government doing it us as community should pick it up but we're a small organization we've been we've done it for the fourth year now and hopefully other people will pick up these things take time how are you popularizing this i mean what 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 forms of media are you using to popularize this because this is the first time i'm hearing about it absolutely from yeah, absolutely can i just say something uh mobile today when i say mobile almost everybody's heard of mobile when mobile started i was i was helping at the beginning mm -hmm. and some people not heard of it it takes a while for these things and they have to budget and do on tv sure. and we don't have tv we don't even have mainstream media uh, profiles so let's say that we are a small grassroots organization so i think word of mouth you hear it today you can tell someone mm -hmm. we're on the radio so that helps a bit mm -hmm. but yeah so we do our uh, emails or uh, on the internet uh, we use what's called the British Black Music uh, mailing list to publicize things online. You can check out events we're doing or have done on bbm.eventbrite.com. bbm.eventbrite.com. So we put all our, our things on, 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 that, on that page. So yeah, publicity is not easy. This year actually, uh, I'm trying to hook in with uh, The Voice to do a few things well in advance of these programs so indeed uh, i had an advert run twice that showed a number of things we, we're going to be doing for 2018 mm -hmm. so slowly slowly mm -hmm. i think it definitely needs to be claimed you know since you've been doing it claim it hold it copyright it, protect it and just we just push it out and make it grow absolutely because you know garvey's a foundation you can't get any better than garvey mm -hmm. man's been it since that from not 1920s and his works and his energy still lives on. Absolutely. So that fire burning. Absolutely. You know? Can I just say that if you're not on the BBM mailing list and you want to be on it, you can email me now, put on. The email is bbmbmc at gmail.com. So BBM, that stands for British Black Music, and BMC stands for Black Music Congress. So remember, bbmbmc at gmail.com. The reason why I'm plugging is that today I killed myself to send off um, a newsletter and I've discovered a guy called P. L. O. Lumumba. He's a Kenyan law lecturer and activist. And I think, quite frankly, he's about the next person to take Marcus Gabby's mantle. You have to listen to him. So if you check out all uh, the latest newsletter I've sent, it's just links to different things, links to different things. Mm -hmm. And you can hear his speeches. The man is fantastic. P L O Lumumba. <coughs> okay. Okay. We'll do that most definitely. Yeah, because it occurred to me that we keep happening on Marcus Garvey. I'm always talking about Marcus Garvey, doing programs on Marcus Garvey. It's like, but who are those that are alive today? And then That's I discovered right. this month, the last few weeks, and I'm saying, 
there are few of them around, so we have to also help some of the people who are alive. And I really, uh, I'm very excited about this chap. I'm going to get in touch with him, and I really want to get him to London for people to hear him. Where is he at present? He is in Kenya, okay. but he's got so many speeches that you can hear it online. That's why I'm putting out the name. Okay. P L O Lumumba. Those are initials. The P L O are his initials, and this last name is Lumumba. And you can see how grounded he is in the Pan Africanist structure that he's taking uh, Patrice Lumumba's name as his last name. Ah, you know? Yes, and yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, there, there are people are out there. So yeah, respect to uh, Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey died in 1940. That's how many years? Uh, I, can't, I can't do the math. 70, 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> long. Exactly. Look, exactly. There, there are some sons and children of Marcus Garvey. We need to heal them. And, lady, uh, and daughters as well of Marcus Garvey. We, we need to heal them. Indeed. Talking about the ladies, certainly, I mean, my sister, uh, what's her name? Esther uh, uh, Stanford comes to mind. But uh, again, uh, it worries me because it's very difficult to and I, I know that a few of them in Zinga and but we tend to have a lot of the males and uh, not too much of the of the females and we need to see a few more of the Gavia ladies because yeah. remember that uh, the year and I always had a women's section the, the women at the forefront and I think it needs to continue that in, in present day we should be able to reel off a few names yeah. uh, of, of female very I I easily yeah trendy, trendy. okay okay what's up all right, all right. <clears throat> yeah i'm back here again the miserable <laughs> one um when we went down to holborn there was a place that, what was that i can't, I can't remember there was something uh, he was doing down in holborn down in central yes. london or something yeah holborn uh, we are the Unite. Unite is a union and we're very uh, privileged to have some space in there to have a meeting because as I said, uh, very late in the day I was introduced to the International Reggae Day concept and because June, July is British Black Music Month I was able to program an uh, International Reggae Day official event. I uh, sort of licensed by the International Reggae Day in Jamaica. We did a program at the University of Westminster so a few people who came to that event were excited that we should move it forward. I mean, they're prepared to help me move it forward. So those meetings that you came to at Unite was to move forward on the International Record Day thing for next year, 20, 2018. So indeed, uh, we definitely are locked down to do something uh, good and better in, on 1st July in central London. And I think a few organizations will be doing it outside London. But more importantly, instead of us being in one place, a few promoters are also looking to do things across London. So 1st July next year is going to have a few uh, programs as opposed to just one official program that we had last year. So that was the International Reggae Day Reggae Stakeholders Meeting. I think that's where you came to. Okay, I've got another 13 minutes before we call it a wrap and turn it over. First of all, I want you to say hi to your wife again because if you don't say hi to your wife, we can give her and call out her name, pronounce it properly so that I can okay. repeat it too. Go ahead. Yeah, she's got Aula Sewa. Aula Sewa. Sewa. Good afternoon to you. Now go ahead and yeah. see what you're going to say. <laughs> that, that, that reminds me, uh, just across the road, I want to give a shout out to Mari, Mari Rance, uh, a local cafe. It's called the uh, uh, what's Monk's Park Community Cafe. We did. Uh, Morris? Oh, Mari, Mari, Mari. I know him as Mari, so you might not know him. Oh, okay. Mari. Okay. Mari. <laughs> no, no, brother Mari. Uh, again, he's a guardian. In fact, if you look at his profile, what, uh, WhatsApp has got uh, Marcus Gavia on there. So we did, we want, and it's important. He's got this cafe. Uh, it's a monk's back, and I'll suggest that if you you got activities, do try and bring in there. So we're trying to support that uh, cafe, and we took in what we call what, who I am and what I do networking. So the name suits for itself. You go tell people who you are and what you do. And uh, in fact, 12 June, I think we've locked down 12 June to have the, the next one, which will be the number nine in the series, who I am and what we do. So that's a networking situ situation. So that's what we did at Morris Place. In Brent, uh, hopefully we might go back to the Civic Center to do a program uh, circling in June as part of British Black Music Month. Well, in the last couple of years, I think we've done an African. Oh, I don't do Black History Month. I do African History Month. African, African history, World History. African history. African history season. Yeah. 
So uh, we, we, we'll probably go back to our Brent Civic Center to do our African History uh, program in, 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 in there. So those are some of the things we do in Brent. Oh, we do a lot of things in Harrow. All down Brent residents attend to buildings in Harrow. We've been doing uh, the African History program or season there for a long time. So it's called Extra History Season and we tend to do them on Mondays. For 2018, I've only locked down one and that's January 29th. It's always 6 30 to 8 30. They are free. It's best to book if you can on harrowbhm.co.uk. Harrow BHM stands for Black History Month. So harrowbhm.co.uk. Also, you can go to harrowbhm.eventbrite.com. And the next program we're doing on June, so January 29th, 6 30 to 8 30, what is rock music? Yeah, what is rock music? To me, as I said, I'm into black music and rock music is black music, but people do not understand that. So I'm not doing this session. I've got a lady called Sharon Day who's going to break down rock music in the context of black music. It's a shame that the image that we see of rock music is very European. So our own Africans don't realize that. It's been hijacked by them. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, but it's not good enough to say it's been hijacked. But we should be telling our people that they realize because our own Africans say, oh, you do white man's music. Mm. So we should, no, no, it's my music, it's my music, so if I decide to drop a rock guitar on uh, a reggae track, it's not a crazy thing because it's all part of that great black music family, you know? So, I understand the hijacking, but that's not good enough. We disempower ourselves, we can do something, we can reclaim it. There are a few of uh, what I call African-led rock, rock bands, and, and again, you go to their gigs, and it's mostly Europeans who are, who, who are supporting it because we don't see it as our music. So we have to re-educate ourselves, that's our music. But music is about taste. So, yeah, okay, maybe rock doesn't do it for you. Mm. But if you understand it's black music, that's good enough for me. Mm. Reggae doesn't do it for everyone. Beautiful. You know, so it's our mu our horses, horses and courses. But just to understand that rock music is black music. So that's what Sharon Day will be breaking down on 29th June in Harrow. We are in Harrow Menka, but again, please go to harrowbhm.co.uk and you can get the information. And what is your personal um, information as far as the telephone number, contact details for you uh, yourself? Yeah, because we're a small organization, we can only do it by email. So it's uh, bbmbmc at gmail.com. That's my personal Repeat email. Repeat it one more time, please. Yeah, bbmbmc at gmail.com. If you just remember, uh, the organization is called Black music so british black music dot com slash black music congress so the initials are bbm bmc so just put that together in our gmail dot com or else actually you know something if you google british black music we do come up high on 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 on, on, on the listing so if you, you forget everything just say british black music uh you know and my name is kwaku and i said we we'll talk about music, but it's important to talk about history because I also do history. I'm not just interested in, in, in music. How uh, many years have you been running now? Because I know you've been running uh, for a long yeah, time. Yeah, in terms of British black music, I think we started in 2002. Okay. British, but we're doing some things before we got the website. Yeah. Shabba, Shabba Regis says good information. He's on Facebook. He's oh, well, very, thank very you very much. Thank you very much. Um, with that, hopefully we can have you back in in the very near future. Maybe mm. on King Lion, because King Lion has been more of the history of England. I don't know. It's like I just came off of the boat. <laughs> I was going to say the banana boat. <laughs> but as I say, yeah. not be decent. Right. Just came off of the boat last week and so forth. But he's got a better history and so forth. So hopefully, you know, next time we can bring yes. you in and, and yeah. we have additional information and you can bring your wife in because I know she's got a lot to say. Because when I see her, she give me a check and let me know. You da 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 make sure that I do the right thing, alright? So you wanna say hi before you call say hi to her one more time because I know how the female energy is needed. Yeah, no, thank you, Uncle, for inviting me. It's fantastic. But since you're talking about the book, can we just say that next year, right, it's gonna be the seventieth and anniversary of the docking of Empire Windrush. But I'm trying to get a book out because there's a whole lot of misinformation about Windrush. For example, when it came, right, the number of people on it. So you hear words that seem very authoritative. 492 Jamaicans or 
African Caribbeans know it wasn't 492 or that it, uh, it landed on June 22nd. No, it did not land on June 22nd. So how many was there then, real quick? About 500 or so because there were people okay. who were still awake. But it wasn't just oh, 500. Yeah, yeah, okay. There were other people, there were Polish people, there were over a thousand people on that, on, on that, on that ship. So because we're talking about the African Caribbean experience, we focus on the African Caribbeans, right? But there were other people, I said over a thousand people on that, on that ship, Europeans, they had about 60 Polish women, for example, on, on, on there. And they were all not Jamaicans, for example, we know of uh, Lord Kishner. Lord Kishner, for example, was on this ship, he was from Trinidad. Mm -hmm. So was Lord uh, Wood, Wood, Woodbine. So we have to get the narrative right. But, you know, back in the day, 70 years ago, to all these people, you're Jamaicans. You know, yes, that's yeah, what, 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 what I thought. They didn't understand the differences. Yeah. The, the <laughs> machine did not come straight from Kingston to, 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 to Tilbury either. It went through I a few places. I think it's just because Jamaica is the most large Caribbean I island. I, I understand, understand that. Why. But we still have to break down and get the facts right. If not, we regurgitate the same thing over and over. So I'm really trying to uh, rush out a book next year that sort of highlights some of this. Thing. And also our 2000 uh, year history in Britain as well. Because 70 years is nothing compared to 2,000 years in, in, in Britain. So those are some of things. But talking about my wife, uh, her pet project at the moment is the environment. Because we are, the side of our road has become like uh, a tick, right? Then she's always phoned. I have to say, when you phone the council, within a day or two, they do pick it up. But it's not good enough for people just to leave things, you know, fl fly tipping. So she's got something, a, a project called taking a stand against uh, fly tipping and uh, littering. And in fact, we've got a record, in, uh, I can't remember, um, it's called, it's called to my head, look around, and then in brackets, the environment. And if you Google it, I've put a draft uh, video on, on YouTube. So look around the environment, yeah? It's by Music for Courses, that's one of our strands. But Music for Courses is C-A-U-S-E-S. So course, so the environmental is course mm -hmm. we do it. Sometimes we do history. That's a course we do it. So music four, the number four. So if you Google music four courses on YouTube, you can see the the video or, or listen to the song, which is not bad at all. Not bad. It was just a project we did la last year or two years ago uh, uh, in the Grange in Neesting, and slowly uh, we we released the, the CD a few weeks ago. But we're going to do the detailed download possibly in, in, in February. So, look around the environment by Music for Courses. Well, you've got another two and a half minutes, so you might as well continue. I'm going to close yeah, that. Yeah, okay, but okay. Go on but anyway, go on. respect to those that are listening and those that are watching our uh, Omega Radio. Uh, this was about community radio, talking about community issues. My name is Kwaku, as I said. If you're interested in what I do, you can always check out bbm And Real quick, do you have anything coming up in the near future? Any events at the... Um, uh, civic Center or... Uh, no, 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 I was supposed to take a break, but I think on... A break? Gen yeah, January 18th. Kind of a break. January 18th, we've got the International Reggae Day, Reggae Stakeholders Meeting. Again, that'll be Central London. So if you email me at bbmbmc at gmail.com, I'll put you in the loop. And then January 29th... Oh, I, I forgot. Music industry courses. Because you see, it's not just about the music. You have to understand the business. So every January... We start of the year because a lot of people have got what you call New Year resolution. This year I'm going to do the yes, music, yes, and yes. then by the third month or something, it's all waned. So we do music industry courses in January so that people can have information to put them forward. So January twentieth, we've got the BBM New Year Music Industry Knowledge Boosting Workshop. Sounds good to me. Knowledge Boosting Workshop. Our people are good doing the music, but you have to understand an industry. That takes place in Harrow. There is a charge to can, can I say that the early bird ends on 31st December? So if you're interested, go to bbm.fmbright.com. bbm.fmbright.com to book for the BBM New Year Music Industry Knowledge Boosting Workshop. How long does it last? It lasts just an afternoon, 1 to 5 pm. Okay. Let me give you my background, right? I've got You've got like 50 seconds. Yeah. I've got a 
I've got degrees in music industry law, in the music industry, I've taught in universities, I've taught on grassroots level. That's Much amazing. of what I, I used to teach at higher education or further education is what I crystallized into an afternoon. It's practical in the sense that you understand where do you get your money, which organizations do you have to join, what are rights, what is copyright, all that is down there in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah, so I think, What's Uncle, thank you very much. What do you say? What's the cost? Oh, yeah. Up to 31st December is £30, after, thir uh, after 31st December is £50, it's January 20th, it's January 20th. Is and that like no, 10 seconds? Yeah, we just want to make it accessible. So Say goodbye. BBM, B, uh, BBM .eventbrand.com. Uncle, thank you very much. Goodbye to Omega listeners. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm coming on your course, man. I'm gonna you take a what, what happened today? He <coughs> came in for ten o'clock. I'm just listening real quick. You've got to give yourself. No, my I'm coming on your course. Uh, that is a course. Listen. No, sorry, I was gonna say. No, you can talk to him in a minute. What happened? We went down for an hour and a half uh -huh. from 10 to 11, 11.30 right. because internet upstairs is trying to rob us. Oh. So it's a long story. So I had one or two things, but I just want to take like 10 minutes after that and finish up and then I'll, and then I'll turn it over to you. All right, now you can ask him. And I was calling you because I need that thing there. I was, the dollars, I was calling you. I was, that's why I was calling you, man, because uh, my phone's tripping out. Baby, what do you think? Um, something. Uh, because I was calling you for the lobby for that to sort out some famous things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry to customers who feel let down on first. My phone has just been going crazy, man. So we do switch it off. I had to. How did that help you? I had to switch it off and then reboot it. Like, there's there's something going on with the internet, and the virus to the phone is not working. A 31 year old from Chesterfield and a 12 year old from Sheffield will appear after the Yeah, Parker, that, that event sounds good, There's man. And it's cheaper than the price of what it is. Before, we used to do it for free. But I noticed that there's different mentality. Mm. If you pay for some, there's a different mentality yeah, about how you appreciate it. Yeah. 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 yeah, so it's not it's supposed to be something accessible, but also you have a sense that I paid for this and it's of value to me. So that's why the main reason why I, I charge. Yeah. So we just pay on the event, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and this is going to be where? In Harrow? In Harrow, yes. It's Harrow Har 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 the Hill. Yeah. Less than five minutes walk from Harrow the Hill station. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is me, man. So I used to go to some of these um, music meetings, and especially like the guys from the world of the dog. Okay. And they say, look, man, we should have controlled this dub scene now because the white boys have jumped in. They're taking over it and controlling it, and, and black man's being left out of it. You know what I mean? And, you know, I I grew up with roots and dub, and for me, I, I would have loved to have protected it. You know, but it's gone to the point now where how do we take charge of it? You know. It's not easy, but I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at someone like what's his name, uh, my professor. Yes. This guy's oh, business yeah. locked down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah.